Hello, friends. Welcome to the Second Phase Podcast. I'm your host, Robin Graham, a certified brand strategist and business coach. You might be wondering, why the second phase? The second phase may be a change in careers and learning how to navigate the world of entrepreneurship, a significant lifestyle change, going from stay-at-home parent to starting a business, a traumatic loss, a move, or an illness. It could be any number of things. No matter the definition, you are here to discover your second phase. Learn about creating a personal brand that stands out and makes an impact to grow as your authentic selves and follow your callings, values, visions, and passions, and to learn how to build a solid foundation for long-term brand and business success. Through interviews and solo episodes, we'll be diving into inspiring stories, life and business journeys of failure and success, and the strategies and tools used along the way. You ready to learn? Grab your coffee, the car keys, or the dog's leash, and let's dive in to this episode. Hey, everyone. I am so excited today because I have a dear old friend with me, Stephanie Gass, and I will put in the show notes just straight up front um, links to previous episodes where Steph was here and we talked about different things because I think throughout our conversation today, you're going to find so much value, but you're going to want a little bit more. So I'll direct you through the show notes to those links to those interviews as well. But before we dive in, I just want to say that Stephanie is a woman of faith. She has been a very um, inspiring part of my entrepreneurial journey. I took Stephanie's mastermind to really dive deep into podcasting and that podcasting, this podcast, this show, the Robin Graham show has really been transformative for my life and business. And I have Stephanie to thank for that. So um, Stephanie, thank you for everything that you do and everything you put out into the world, sharing your faith and sharing the incredible gift that podcasting is not only for the host, but for every single person out there who has an opportunity to listen and learn really for, for free to either improve their life, grow their business or whatever they're listening for. So thank you for that. And before we dive in, I would love for you just to tell the listeners a little bit more about you than the gushy stuff that I just said. Yeah. Well, hi, Robin. And hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. <clears throat> so like Robin mentioned, I am a podcast coach. But aside from that, what I really love to help women do is get clarity on their calling and then build a business out of that calling work that becomes their life's work. Because I truly believe, and I've seen over and over again, you were created and you have this direction of your, of your life that God is trying to get you to, to go on. And we get so distracted from the thing or man, I already have a job where I do this, or I have a degree in this, or I've, I don't think that that would make money. And so we don't pursue the thing, the thing that we were created to do. And I think that that is just why you seek this, this level of fulfillment that we can't seem to attain is because you're not fulfilling the calling. So that's the first step of what I do. <clears throat> and I help women get clear on that call. And then the second phase is, well, okay, cool step. I have a direction. I think I know what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to head to social media and build a business. And of course that doesn't work. How many of you have tried that? And so I am extremely passionate. I'm sure I'll get on my soapbox at some point in this conversation <laughs> about there's an easier way to grow a business. And so I help then that next phase start a podcast so that they can have a one-to-many marketing where you can grow in way less hours per week from behind a mic. There's no pressure. There's no weird, awkward DM conversations happening. There's freedom and how you build your business. And then the last phase is helping monetize that podcast. So that's what I do. I'm a boy mom. I've got two little boys. Uh, I live in Tejeras, New Mexico. I drink way too much coffee and uh, I love to be in PJs all day. So <laughs> <laughs> that is Stephanie and that's chill, ladies. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things you said, Steph, and I, you and I are both on the same page as far as that clarity goes. And the reality is if we don't have clarity on our purpose, then we are going to have confusion around our message. And when we're confused and have confusion. Con confusing messaging, then our audience is confused and confused people do not buy. So, so super important. So let's talk about this because you have been for a long time taking blocks of time away from social media and it did not affect your business. I have been doing the same thing. I may have content scheduled out, 
but I don't spend a lot of time there anymore. And you know, that everybody knows, um, who's on my email list that I I've had to step away. It wasn't healthy for me. I would get in there and I would just scroll and my anxiety levels would go up everything from comparison ism to imposter syndrome, to just feeling inadequate or, or being triggered by all of the news and the negative comments and all of that stuff. So, so many people come to me and they're like, well, I hate social media, but I know I have to be there. And I, that's how I can build my business. The reality is, and I say this all the time, it's not about building a business on a platform that you don't own. It's about building relationships and building trust really genuinely connecting as your authentic self. So I am happy that you're going to share a lot of your insights and light on doing just that. How can we step away from the the mayhem, the chaos of social media and all of these demands on our time and create something really meaningful and purposeful that can fulfill our own calling and purpose that, and do the things that God really wants us to be doing, not getting sucked into those negative spirals. Wow. So I totally agree with you. And I think social media is something that you're hearing over and over again. You've got to be there. You have to have a presence. It matters that you're doing the newest thing. You must be doing reels because that's the newest thing, right? You must be on TikTok making the newest thing. And so you're hearing all these people that you perceive to be so successful, tell you that you have to do a thing. So you go as a new entrepreneur or someone trying to grow your brand and you post on all the places. And I constantly am like, stop and ask yourself, like, has this worked? And is this actually working? Okay. Because what you see is if I come and show up and I spend an hour or two here a day, I make a reel or I do the thing, or I'm in the comments, maybe it feels like it's working. Maybe you have a couple hundred likes on a post. But what Robin specifically said is trust. And I actually, one of my formulas is trust equals impact and income. Are you actually creating trust from a little post that someone likes? No. Why? Because that person is there to numb out. You only have two to three seconds of their, of their attention anyway. So maybe they liked your thing. They're not actually converting over, right? There's no conversion happening from a quick action on a social post. So that's the first thing. And I'm going to give you some numbers to what happened for our business, uh, in my company. And so then the next phase, the next question that you ask yourself is cool. How long is the shelf life of this content that I've just created? I spend an hour to two hours in the Facebook groups, connecting with people, posting a reel over here, doing this thing over here, sharing a big, awesome, uh, story today that I took all this time to do. Well, guess what? You show up tomorrow and it's gone. It's gone. It's absolutely dead. So unless you show up every single day, multiple times a day, you are actually dead to the platform. And so what I did is I said, I wonder if this is true. I, this can't, this, I have this theory, but it can't possibly be true, man. Like we have 750 likes per post. I've got 350 people watching my stories. This has got to be making a difference. So I felt convicted. Similarly to Robin, I was completely addicted to my phone. I felt like every moment that I had with my boys, I had to quickly grab my phone and capture it because that was going to create authenticity and stories. And then somebody was going to connect with me and it was going to make this big difference in my conversion. And so I was capitalizing on my kids. I was capitalizing on my life and it felt wrong, but yet I thought I had to do it. And we were doing all this hashtag research. We would do all this research. We'd, and oh man, this must be working. So I just kept hearing God, like lay it down. You got to stop. Like you are, it was an idol. I mean, it, well, it had crossed the boundary of being cute. And so one day <clears throat> I woke up and I was like, today's the day. I'm just going to lay this down for 30 days and see what happens. So I told the team, I said, no one goes on Instagram for 30 days. We're going to test this out because I want to a either prove that it does hurt our, our business and we do have to be here at some level. And then maybe I can come back with some boundaries or B that it doesn't matter. So here's what happened. Got off of Instagram and the first couple of days felt very, I mean, full of anxiety. You know, it was like, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. We must have a hundred DMS over there. I'm losing sales. Like this is awful. And then pretty soon by like day three, 
And I had been doing weekend, weekend detoxes already, but I was always back on Monday, you know, like it was like a band aid. by that, like third, fourth day, I started realizing I had all this extra time and I'd look up and be like, wow, I think I have a couple hours right now. Maybe I'll create some content. Maybe I'll rework my course. My kids would come in and like, I'd grab my phone and realize I don't have the app. So I put the phone down fully present for the first time, like, oh, like in so long, you know, and I started to feel this freedom and I explain it as if like the way I explain this is if I was in an invisible prison with invisible walls and I had sat down in this invisible prison and I, I just kept sitting there and I didn't realize that the door was open to the prison. I didn't realize the door was open because I had the prison. I was so focused on the bars that I didn't look over to realize that the door had been open the whole time. And I finally had walked out of the door and I didn't want to go back, Robin. And so, but at the end of 30 days, we sat down and I went through all the metrics. Okay. What happened? Downloads went up on the podcast. Email list grew. Um, Revenue had grown because I had time and space to become the CEO of growth again, instead of let me post a thing and get in a conversation with someone that doesn't even care. I had like create, and I found I had created 15 hours a week, 15 hours. I had been wasting, wasting because it didn't hurt the business. So then I said, I'm not getting back. I'm not going back. I did six months completely off of Instagram. And here's the other really sad part that I want you guys to hear. When we got back in to check all the metrics, um, I keep saying we, me and my team, my team helps me with, with that at the time, right? Mm-hmm. Got back in and uh, the likes, <laughs> when we posted again about a, a podcast up, it went 15. When we, I went into stories, 25. Like, because I was gone, I was dead. Mm-hmm. I was dead. And I was like, I am, I'm not gonna show up every day every five minutes, just to say I have 750 likes because it didn't make me any more money. It didn't even matter. It didn't even matter. So after six months, here's the craziest thing, craziest thing, biggest launch ever within that six month period, highest revenue month, highest download month on the podcast. We had passed 12,000 email list subscribers. The team had gone from five to 17. I mean, I am talking the hand of God, like favor beyond imaginable happened when I laid it down. Like I said, no more. I'm going to listen to God's way of building this thing. And because of the obedience and the surrender in it, he blessed it. And I look up and I'm like, you guys, there's freedom from this for you. You don't have to be here. And so that's what happened for me. And I proved, I put my money where my mouth is like, do I really have to be here? So now today we know what I no longer use Instagram at all ever. All we do is post our pod episode over there and that's it. That is literally it. It gets no likes. Nobody cares, but we're just posting it just in case somebody stumbles on, <laughs> on us over there. Uh, don't have a TikTok account. Don't have a Twitter account. Don't I'm nowhere else, but Pinterest and my podcast. And it is so freeing. So that's why. And I wanted to give you that big backstory because you can have freedom from it and you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. And I also want you to really inventory if you're sitting in the prison right now, because you can walk out. Friends, did you know that I have a resource page on my website with free eBooks to help you navigate anxiety or to build a successful business? Just go to www.therobingraham.com forward slash resources and download your free eBooks today. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. And you know, the funny thing is when I took my, th- my time off of Instagram, nothing changed, nothing changed in my business. There was so much that changed in my life and I grew so much as a person and I became less dependent on a thing that at any given point in time could disappear. And what is so important is Using those things that you own, your email list, your website, your blog, those things that give you the ability to create value, to publish value that is going to be evergreen. It's never going to disappear unless you decide to turn it off. 
where social media could go away tomorrow and you lose everything. So you guys, if you are using social media, I encourage you to take that content and put it somewhere else, because otherwise, if you really think it's valuable and you want to keep it, put it somewhere else. Cause at any point in time, the, whatever you want to call them, the masters of social media could strip that away from you. So be mindful of that. And I think take note, like Stephanie has, has done and really look at where is your audience most engaged with you? Where do they go to find you? And I would bet that if you are actively giving them value from your email list, that is where you will be seeing the biggest results or your podcast, which Stephanie is going to dive into. Now we're going to talk about how you can start that podcast so that you don't have to be so worried about social media. And I think, you know, it's great to post those, those episodes on social media. I do the same thing. Like I put it on LinkedIn because it can, they can drive traffic, but they're not the brunt of what is going on behind the scenes in my business or your business. And I think it's really important to just take note of that. Just take stock in that fact that you don't yeah. have to be in that prison of what every single other person is doing. You get to do you and you get to choose how you want to structure your time in your business and yeah. save yourself time. And I, honest to goodness stuff. I think that, you know, the, the, we can associate like negative thoughts, um, anxiety, like all these things that we experience, we can associate that to Satan tempting us and pulling us away from our calling. And I think that that's exactly what social media does. And I have seen time and time again, people who, you know, call themselves a Christian or they say they're X, Y, Z, but then they post things. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like, nothing's aligned. And so then what happens? You lose trust. And the only reason they're posting things on social media is because they feel that because everybody else is doing it, they have to do it. And so I think that there's just, oh my gosh, so much value in this conversation to enlighten you guys, um, to really take note of what you're doing, why you're on the platform, what you're doing with your time on that platform and who you're following to make sure that you're not getting distracted and sucked away from what God is actually calling you to do. So, okay, Steph, I've rambled now, but let's talk about podcasting because I think there's so much value in it. And I think that we can really inspire people to take that next step. So you guys are thinking, man, if I don't use social media, there's just no way I can build my business. I'm not going to be able to do it, right? How am I going to build an audience? What about all, all of those likes and followers that I have? So the first thing you need to do is be honest with yourself. Are any of those likes and followers actually converting into paid dollars in your bank account? Go check. Maybe a little bit. Maybe you got a few hundred bucks. You got a sale. Okay, cool. But what if you had a hundred sales, right? What if you had a half a million dollar business? Like I want you to think so much bigger because your hour of your time, time to me is, is much more important than money because my time has needs to have the highest ROI in my entire business. So if I'm wasting an hour on a thing that doesn't produce income or growth in my company, that is the wrong thing for me to be doing. And so I realized a, I needed to break up with social media because it was not good for me, my life, my family. It wasn't idle. It was Satan distracting me a hundred percent. But the other piece was like, it was just wasting my time because it wasn't converting into dollar bills and a whole lot of new followers, which if we're going to impact God's kingdom, come on, let's get, let's get with the program. Let's start making real revenue so we can bless people. So we can bring God glory in the money that we make as Christian, powerful kingdom women of God. Right. And so I heard in 2018, I had been all over the place, right. Blogging and like doing this and social media and Facebook lives start a podcast. It was like truly a divine. It was a dream. It was a prophetic. Like you will start a podcast and what podcasting. Okay. So started podcasting. And within a year we had, I had grown the collective audience to over a hundred thousand people just from podcasting. And here's the craziest part about this. You think, well, how does podcasting actually grow an audience? Podcasting grows your audience, not social media. So I want you guys to think of an upside down triangle at the top of the triangle is podcast. That actually is the new funnel. So we forget about socials. We forget about making reels, all that other stuff, which if you really enjoy it and love it and you can have boundaries, great. 
that's okay. We're not, you know, bashing other. You're like, but I love it. Okay, fine. Cool. But I don't love it. Robin doesn't love it. And I think 90% of you don't love the amount of time that you're over there. So imagine if you could replace that top of the upside down triangle with podcasting. How does it work? Well, you do one episode a week, super simple. Uh, let's say I'm going to do a visual because I'm a visual learner. Let's say that your brand is macro planning for busy moms. So you teach moms how to use macros to lose weight and get healthy. So you, you do your podcast macros made easy. For example, you have an episode that says, um, macro planning one-on-one for beginners, three tips to start your macros, three tips to set your macros. Okay. You do one episode, you record that episode. It takes you 30 minutes to plan it. 30 minutes to record it. I teach you to edit as you go. So you're not wasting a bunch of time editing. Then you publish it. The little key phrases that we, I teach you to use, let's say macro planning, let's say set up your macro, that little key phrase goes into Google. It, and then we share it on Pinterest. It goes over into the Apple podcast space. Some mom somewhere types in macro planning, your episode pops up. You have a new listener and this is exactly how podcasting works for you. You didn't have to push your content everywhere in a creepy, weird way and force people to talk to you about your product. You're like, hi, valuable content internet, go share it with people, right? So you do that. That took you, let's say two hours of your life, just two hours. That one episode, what I have discovered through all of my students at this point, we have over 1500 students that have gone through the programs, which is crazy is that we have roughly a one to 2% conversion rate on recurring listeners. So when you think about that, if you had a hundred recurring listeners on your podcast, you just popped out there. You let the podcast work for you by your SEO. And one easy thing I teach is Pinterest marketing because it's one to many, instead of going on socials, you just post a thing to Pinterest, super easy. You would have one to do sales a month. Okay. Amazing. Imagine if you had a thousand recurring listeners to your podcast. On average, you're going to have 10 to 20 sales a month. I have 10,000 ish recurring podcast listeners. You guys, that is a hundred to 200 sales a month. Does that blow your mind? It is possible. And all from just one simple, easy podcast a week. It seems ridiculously simple and that's why it works. So I wanted to give you guys that example. So Robin, what does that bring up as follow-up questions? For them thinking about how does this actually work to grow my audience? Mm, that's such a good question. And I step the one thing that you mentioned too is that, um, and I think people get a little bit overwhelmed with podcasting and the thought of podcasting because we don't know who's listening. You know, like we don't know who's actually consuming because we can't see them. We don't see a profile picture. We don't see that. So. For those people who need that reassurance, like, can you just kind of walk them through like, okay, are you, I personally feel that with podcasting, we're building relationships. So I brought you on my show and I trust you. So now my listeners trust you. So right. it's an opportunity to build relationships and build trust with your listeners and oh, yeah. then to expand their horizons, so to speak, because we're teaching. Um, so that you get to show your value, you get to show how smart you are, you know, the tools that you provide the, the whatever it is you do, you get to educate just like the, the example you used. But when you do that, you have that opportunity to build trust. But I think what's intimidating is you, you just don't know who's out there, who's listening. So what do you say to the people that, they, they want all of this, but they're holding on to that need to know exactly who that person is that they're talking to. Right. And so again, we got to ask ourselves why, you know, why does it matter to you? The face that's listening to your podcast, the way that I, there was a big release process for me that I had to go through around the instant gratification of a like, or a view, or a, even a message, for example, to go to, you know what? I'm here not to serve man, but to serve God. And if that's what I'm truly here to do, it's not a graphic that's, that serves God. It's me showing up and opening my mouth and he shall fill it. It's showing up and being like, I'm going to talk today about this thing that's on my heart, whatever that, and your thing is not too small. It can be a five minute episode. It can be a 10 minute episode. It can be whatever's on your heart, but you show up and here's the difference. Instead of going superficial with people on social, you go so deep in five, 10, 15, 20 minutes 
within one episode, people are subscribed within one episode. They're like, I'm on that email list. I'm going to find, does this person have a Facebook group? They're like, they feel like your friends and that's, it rips off the vulnerability bandaid immediately. So you've got to trust the process. First of all, that it's okay for you not to put an identity with every single person that likes your stuff, but that honestly could be a distraction because why does it even matter to you who you're called to serve? You should just show up and serve because you're called to serve. So that's the first thing I would say here. But the Mm -hmm. second thing I would say here is that as after you've been podcasting for a while and you've learned the power of one, I know that you guys have probably heard Robin talk about who are you speaking to one person, one problem, one avatar, one set of content, right? This macro mom is not going to go off and talk about styling her mantle. She's going to be like macros, nutrition, easy, quick fitness. This mom is super busy. So this person's like, you're going to filter out people who aren't for you. Cause they're already like this person. So niche, they see me, they feel like your best friends. So over time, um, they will want to connect with you. And so I think trusting the one to many marketing where people come to you. So for us, that looks like obviously building the email list. And then we do have a Facebook community. If you don't want to do it on Facebook, you can have some other type of community, but that's where people begin to show their identity because those are your deepest fans. Mm -hmm. I call them super fans. They're like, man, I'm obsessed with you. I love your show. I'm on the list. Like I want to be in the Facebook group. So now we have 8,000 people in the Facebook community. Those are the faces we're called to serve, not a hundred thousand people who liked something randomly somewhere, some reason why, right? It's like, you're in it with me all the way to the depths of our Facebook community. Now we see you like now we're conversating with you and you, there's just, you have to trust this process. There will not be the instant gratification that you feel on a social platform, but that's the point it's to Mm -hmm. remove yourself from yourself and to get to this place of like, I'm serving to give, and I don't know the outcome. I'm not sure if this whole podcasting thing is going to work, but I'm willing to go deeper with people and let go of these vanity metrics and just serve and give and know that like God will bless that obedience Mm -hmm. and that giving heart that you have. You can't give too much away. You can't show up and serve more deeply and it be a bad decision, right? It's always going to bless you. I love that so much. And I think, um, what you just said brought me to the reminder of being patient and, you know, really being patient in every aspect of this to let your, both yourself grow as well as let your audience grow. And so the one question that I have stuff that I think some of the listeners are probably thinking, especially anyone who has already started a podcast, what, um, expectations they can like, let me say that again. What expectations can they have as far as growth goes? Like, you know, sometimes growth can happen overnight. Sometimes growth takes six months to a year. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I think, you know, we are called to be patient and God's timing is limitless. God's timing is perfect. It's so much better than our timing, but I think a lot of people get frustrated and think, well, I only have, you know, 500 downloads. Is this even working? Is this even worth my time? So the first thing I want want you to ask yourself again is how long have I been doing the things that still aren't working? That's the first question. So you're going to look, wow, I've been on social media for five years. It still hasn't worked. Where's your six figure business, right? Whatever that number is for you. Where's your thousand dollar a month business? If that's what you want. Cause it's probably not there from social. So we have to be first honest with ourselves about what's not working. Get rid of all of that. Then we say, I'm ready to start this thing and be fully committed. I'm constantly like one long form and then one type of promo. So for us, it's podcasting is the long form. Pinterest is the promo. That's what we've committed to as a company and me for a long time. That's what I was doing when I was a solopreneur. <clears throat> and so digging into that first and foremost, and then secondly, knowing that until you get clear, what do you actually do? What is the one thing you do? What is the one person that you serve? And what is the one solution you provide them? That is when you get to start the clock of success because so many of you are all over the place with a lifestyle brand with 17, 17 offers, tiny offer here, mastermind here, ebook on this thing over here. Like, what do you actually do? If you can't answer me that in 10 words or less, you don't get to start the clock. 
because your audience is so confused because you don't even know what you do. So that's the fir- very first thing is you got to really sit down and do some digging here. Like, what do I do? Who do I serve? How do I serve them? And what's my one place I'm showing up for a whole 12 to 24 months before I even look up. So once you cl- cleaned all that up, um, and if not, huh, clarify your calling, come hang out with me. We'll fix up all your, all your life over there or work with Robin can help you too. Uh, you start that <laughs> clock. I know what I do. I'm so clear. Here we go. That's when the clock starts. The other thing you have to do here is understand like your journey is different than other people, right? Like I've been podcasting for almost four years. We're like inches from a million downloads, which is so crazy. Incredible. Well, I have a student of mine who has been podcasting for only two years. Her first year was crickets. Boop, 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 boop. She had her thousand. Like, she's like, woohoo, I got a thousand download month. Right? Like, I mean, it took a long time to start gaining traction. Well, she's about to pass a million downloads. She'll probably hit it faster than me because her second year exploded. You can't compare to someone else's journey, right? Because it's not apples to apples. And so you have to understand that your journey is only yours. And God knows when you're ready to basically yield, like yield the floodgates, right? Like when those floodgates burst open, he knows if you're ready. And so you've just have to have an open mind and open heart. Now, what metric do you look for? You look for growth. So Mm -hmm. if I had one download last month, do I have two? Amazing. You are winning at life. That's what you're looking for. What other metric are you looking for? You're looking for about a 1% conversion rate on your recurring listener. About a hundred people that are constantly listening to your episodes. Are you consistently hitting one to two sales a month? That's really growth. That's the growth you're looking for. So what should an expectation be? Well, I hate to say it, but the expectation simply is that I'm going to show up and serve and give everything that I have for 12 to 24 months. And then I will look up. What I've seen, Robin, is is the students who actually do that don't get distracted, don't give up on it, don't rebrand two months later, right? And they really know what they do. It's around the 18-month mark that we see this massive explosion. Sometimes it's 24 months, but like, I mean, dozens of them, dozens of them where it's like, oh, I'm consistently hitting sales. I'm consi- I've passed a hundred thousand downloads. I've passed 200,000 downloads. Like they're seeing the really big explosion happen in the podcasting space. It's because they stopped all the other extra stuff. They're super clear on what they do. They own one offer only, and they've just dug in like super deep into who they serve. That's really, so I want to give that to you guys, because if you don't have all those other pieces in place, you can't start the clock. Okay. I just, hands down, we could stop right now because what you just said is the bomb, because if you can stay focused and as you were saying this, I'm like, you know, I am guilty. Like I am on all these places and it is a time suck and it is distracting. But what I have seen is when you make that choice of the platform that you want to spend the majority of your time on, and you want to do go all in there, that is when you see conversion. So I encourage everybody out there, if you don't want to start a podcast then at least do your email list or dedicate your time and energy to one place to produce content that is truly meaningful and really demonstrates what you do and how you serve your people. Um, Steph, we're, we are like talking so long here, but I want to kind of wrap up a little bit, but before we do that, we've talked about the metrics. We talked about, you know, starting the podcast, having clarity around our message before we start the podcast. How do people monetize a podcast? And listeners, yeah. just for your reference, I will link back to the episode with Ann Clausen of Podcast Babes because we it was all about monetizing. But because Steph has done what she's done with her business, I want her to give us insight because I think it's going to go a little bit deeper. But I'll link the other episode too, just as an FYI. You can go back and look in the show notes. But Steph, dive in, please. Yeah. So there's lots of ways that you can monetize a podcast. And most of them I hate and tell you don't do it. So there's sponsorships, there's advertising. Those are going to give you pennies on the download. So until you guys are past one, two, three, 10 million downloads, it's really not lucrative. And it takes that beautiful, valuable commercial space that you have and gives it away for pennies. So I don't love that. Um, My actual favorite two methods that I teach to my students, one is coaching because if you coach or mentor or train straight from your show, you can actually monetize from episode one. And this is not to get weird. You're literally sitting with someone on a zoom and you're teaching them something you've already done. 
right? So this macros mama, maybe she does a macro, a weekly macro plan of people live for 30 minutes. Maybe she 50 bucks, a hundred bucks. Maybe you have a business all around, um, homeschooling for moms, teaching women how to homeschool their kids. Maybe you offer homeschooling sessions, homeschooling strategy sessions. Great. Are you life coaching? Amazing. Like whatever that might be. And no, you don't have to have a certification unless you're doing something that has to have a certification. So freedom in that freedom from that. And don't get weird about this. It's truly to get to know your person. So you're like, I don't want to coach. I hate that idea. Okay, fine. Just coach five people to be a hundred percent sure that you validate your offer because the next step, the thing that I love, love, love is an e-course. And so what I always teach people is like, what's the one solution you offer? You only know this when you work with people, you cannot guess at this because it will not make you money because they don't really want it. Ask me how I know, right? So you have to sit with people like, but what about that? Right. Tell me why that hasn't worked for you before. Let's map it out together. You have to refine your own process before you put it into a course. So that's the next step though, is figuring out what is that one passive income offer that I can plug into my show course e-courses really get you anywhere between 80 and 95% profit margin. And you can make a much higher revenue from a $500 course with a hundred recurring listeners. You're just, you're making one, you're making 500 bucks to a thousand bucks a month already with a hundred recurring listeners. Like do you guys think about that? You are literally making 500 to a thousand dollars a month just with a hundred recurring listeners. So compound that you have a thousand recurring listeners It's 5,000 to $10,000 a month, right? I mean, think about compounding that again. You have 10,000 recurring listeners. That's $50,000 a month right there. And you guys, I'm not just making this up. Not only do I see this number live out to be true, but we see it with all of the student base that goes through all my stuff. So the point of that is to say like having your own e-course is my absolute favorite way. And you can't do that though, until you have all the other pieces in place. But those are the two ways that I promote people uh, making money from their show. And I love that because it's, it's simplified, right? Right. It's simplified. So simple. And then you can easily calculate what your um, expected or anticipated earnings are going to be year right. over year um, as you grow, which is super, super cool to be able to do that because it gives you that sense of security financially. And right. also when you're creating like that, and then you're solidifying your own income source, then you're also solidifying how much you can give back to the community or to God totally. or to whatever you yeah. want to support. So that's super, super great. Um, Steph, this has been amazing. I always love having a conversation with you. Do you have any just last minute advice? I do want to say that and encourage the listeners that you have a free course that you promote. And I do want to encourage everybody. If you're interested in starting a podcast, Steph is your girl. She is just incredibly knowledgeable as you can tell, but she gives you every single step that you need in order to make it so that it is a success. I have seen her students time and time again, reach success. So uh, if you want to share, you know, what that link is, and I'll put that link in the show notes as well, because everybody who is even slightly interested in podcasting should definitely go and at least do that free hour and then connect with Steph for her mastermind to build your podcast from the ground up. Ah, well, thanks for having me, Robin. And thank you guys so much for listening and having an open heart. And I just pray that if this intrigued you at all, even if you're like, I would never start a podcast, don't ever say never, because yeah. ask us how we know <laughs> <laughs> that does not ever land well for you. It's almost a foreshadowing of all the things you are going to do when you say, I will never do that. I want you guys to go check out the podcasting workshop that I have. It's free, no strings attached. It's podcast for growth, F O R podcast, F O R growth.com. And it's one hour and it talks about how you can use podcasting to grow a successful audience in less than two hours a week. So it really lays all those things out for you guys visually, just so you can see what's possible. So I'd invite you to come do that. And then of course, the other places you guys can connect with me are my podcast, the Stephanie gas show, um, and stephaniegas.com more freebies and fun stuff over there. But Robin had asked the last thing I want to leave you with, and that is to sit where you are today. And realize that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. I know that we talk about growth and these big numbers and you're so excited to get where you know God has for you, right? You know that there's more for you. You know that there's this journey and you really want that success. But I want you to understand there's no finish line here. The only thing, the only race you're running is the one you're running today. 
And so show up today, ask Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to do today? What's my next right step? Show up with all that you have, partner with him, have fun, and then close your laptop, go live your life, go pour into those hopeful, beautiful kids. If they're still home and if they're not go take a walk, because now you got the freedom in your life, right? (laughs) Do whatever it is that you really want to do to embody the fullness of today. And I, I just pray God's peace over each of you in this journey and that you enjoy it because you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Steph, you have no idea. God works in such funny ways. So this week on Monday, every Monday, I send out an affirmation email. So listeners, if anybody's new here today, be sure you subscribe to the email list because I send out a Monday morning, every single Monday morning, an affirmation slash journaling prompt. And this week it was, you are in the right place at the right time, serving the right people for the right reason. So, so funny that you said that. that. So yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Seth, thanks so much for being here. Always a pleasure to be in your presence and share faith, podcasting, and love with you. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And that's a wrap, friends. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review. That would mean the world to me. If you know someone who could use the information shared today, please share the episode with them too. And let's connect. You can find me on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, and LinkedIn as The Robin Graham. Lastly, if you'd like more information on personal branding and brand marketing strategies, be sure to join my email list and the Female Entrepreneur Insider Facebook group. We are there every week with tips and trainings to help you build a solid foundation for brand and business success. And don't forget, on the website, you can find a plethora of free resources. Go to the robingraham.com forward slash resources and download any of the free resources that I have created to help you build a personal brand that stands out and makes an impact. Until next time, remember to smile.